The ultimate and most dangerous test was a huge, specially constructed vacuum chamber. They were able to pull all the air out to create a big vacuum, just like it would be on the moon. That way we could test our suits to make sure there was no leakage. One such test narrowly avoided disaster. Jim LeBlanc was the test subject in the vacuum chamber. Cliff Hess, the supervising engineer outside. Jim, while you're exercising, I'd like you to stay intermediate all the time. Okay. I'm okay, pretty cool right now. Okay, well, you'll warm up here in a minute, so let's stay right here if you can stand it. The testing started just normally, like they all do. Uh, and Jim was at a vacuum in a spacesuit. Well, I feel pretty good cool there. With all the air sucked out, all that protected him was his pressurized suit. Then something happened. I heard over the headset that he was losing suit pressure. The tube pressurizing his suit had become disconnected. He was in serious danger. There really wasn't any feeling. It was just happening so fast, you know, trying to get the chamber back to a safe pressure and Jim to a safe pressure was inside the suit. As I stumbled backwards, I could feel the saliva on my tongue starting to bubble just before I went unconscious. And that's kind of the last thing I remember. Uh, essentially, he had no pressure on the outside of his body and that's a very unusual case to get, and there's very little in the medical literature as to what happens when you have that. There's a lot of conjecture, you know, that your fluids will boil. Within 25 seconds, a co-worker, sitting in a partially pressurized antechamber and wearing an oxygen mask, was able to dash in. At the normal rate of repressurization, it would have taken 30 minutes to make the chamber safe. Hess repressurized it in just over a minute. That's much, much faster than you would ever come down in an airplane. It would uh, really hurt your ears if you did that. Finally, it was safe to let a doctor in. Miraculously, LeBlanc had already regained consciousness. When I stood up in the chamber, I felt fine. My ears ached a little bit uh, from, the, of course, the rapid repressurization. And uh, that's basically the only effect I had. You know, it was one of the few instances where anybody was ever exposed to that low of a pressure and lived to tell about it with no obvious damage. Such an accident in space would have been fatal. But thanks to testing like this, no astronaut has ever had to face a similar situation. Captain Latimer wants me to prove that I can stay alive with just my spacesuit for protection. We have Sergeant Johnson and Sergeant Jacobs in there with you today, and so two of our finest, and you got a good chance to meet those guys uh, whenever they were uh, over in the integration room with you. They're going to be right there. If There's an to. awful lot of people, presumably all to keep me alive, because when all the air's pumped out, this chamber will turn deadly, making some strange things happen. Is that going to boil? That will begin to boil at around 63,000 feet, so we're going to, and I'll keep, uh, keep you posted on that as we get a little bit closer to it. Okay, we're going to start our uh, rapid ascent up to 75,000 feet now. Project. And we're going to keep an eye on that, uh, that glove, which has already expanded considerably since we started. Now, we just passed through 50,000 feet. That's what the Air Force deems as the space equivalent zone. And uh, that's kind of a carryover to the back to the old space race days, whenever uh, we were trying to kind of set a timeline between us and the... Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Let's just be clear. That water isn't boiling because it's hot, it's boiling because the pressure's so low. Without this suit on, my tears and saliva would boil too. And our glove just popped, so it made it to 70,000 feet. <laughs> okay. 
So far, so good. But things would get a lot more hairy if my cockpit canopy were to fail. Without my suit, such a catastrophic pressure drop would rip apart my lungs. Let's practice that then. Three, two, one. There you go. Pull that helmet hold down. Perfect. You did a great job. Looking good. How you feeling? I'm still breathing. You are still breathing. Your suit pressure looks excellent. Your helmet pressure is looking good. So everything worked exactly like it's supposed to, which is always great. Good. I'm very glad that's over with. Well done. Thank you. Your brains didn't blow up, your eyes didn't bulge out, your guts didn't fall out. So it's a good day so far. What do you say we get you out of that kit then? Yeah, let's get out of that. Let's get out of that.